What's up, y'all? I'm back with the part two of Interview with the Devil, my review. And um, I had pushed pause again, came right back down here, you know, to get back to it. Uh, I hit pause on the video. I'm like, um, two hours in, uh, an hour and 40 minutes from being done with the whole little book or whatever. As y'all know, man, it's an audio book. And uh, I don't really read books i just listen to the audio versions of them but look man so i took down some notes this time there's some key shit that i wanted to talk about so i'm gonna be like talking about the book and kind of like throwing my little extra little sauce in it so um just rock with me man so look one of the key things i took from the book is um basically we gotta remember the book is basically a non-drifter a non-drifter is a free thinker and a person who does um what he want to do and on his free will you know what i'm saying he has free will and he basically a, a very ambitious person you know and know what he want out of life and go toward that and don't let nothing stop him so that's what a non-drifter is and a drifter is a person who the devil which is the person the nine drifter is interviewing. Remember the book is titled Interview with the Devil. The nine drifter is the interviewer and the devil is the man that he's interviewing. Ha and he is under the nine drifter will. So he revealing all his tactics and everything he like to use to m make people become drifters. So if y'all understand what I'm trying to say, but so look the now drifter who interviewing the devil asked the devil like he asked him what are some of the tactics that you like to use to um bring people under your control and one of the biggest thing that he said was um he plants negative thoughts within you um by already using the those things that's already planted around you you know what I'm saying? That you was born with. He liked to get you when you're young. And he liked to discourage you when you're young. And people that surround you, it can be your parents, it can be your family members, friends, anybody that's around you. He plant those, these certain people around you. And um and these people that's around you is already influenced by him. So um they trying to get you now, basically. So he liked to use the negative thoughts of you, you know what I'm saying, to discourage you from whatever your journey is and your real purpose in life, whatever that is. He wants to discourage you from that and keep you thinking negative, thinking you this, have you thinking this shit ain't going to work or I can't do this. You know what I'm saying? I can't do this or um, this too hard or anything like that of those natures. He liked to use to keep you from thinking you can do something. Or whatever. So, he, you know what I'm saying? Another thing that the devil likes to use is he likes to bribe drifters. He likes to bribe, um, I'm tripping. He likes to bribe non drifters, people who are already free thinkers and shit like that. He wants to bribe you with money, materialistic things, and you know what I'm saying? Your appetite for sex, you know. Uh, and a whole bunch of other shit. He like to bribe you with those things to convert you into a non-drifter. Because if you are already a free thinker and think how you think or whatever, um, he like to use these things to bring you over. You know, materialistic shit like your thirst. You know what I'm saying? Your thirst for all this shit because you already want it as a free thinker. You want the best out of life, but he used this shit to like grab a hold to you and capture your mind and have you thinking about this shit. Say for instance, you got like, say for instance, you want a car note, you want a car, right? And your credit is jacked up, right? And say for instance, you got a 400, 500 credit score or whatever. And you want this car at the dealership. You know what I'm saying? You in your early twenties, you still live with your bird, you know what I'm saying? Your mom or your dad or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I say bird, but for people who don't know what that shit mean. But, um, people, for, 
say you, for instance, you still live with your old bird or whatever, and you, you know what I'm saying, you ain't really paying that many bills, you know what I'm saying, but you want this new car at the dealership, and the fucking car is 25, 30,000, you know what I'm saying, and you ain't got much to put down, but like a thousand or two, and you put down on that car, and you leave that dealership with your car note, let's say $700 a month, you know, $700 a month, bro, yo, yo, note $700 a month, you still in your early 20s, so it's like, yo, insurance for full coverage, because why get a brand new car when you ain't got full coverage insurance, you know, like, I always thought that shit was stupid, but it is what it is, this shit that's being done out here, period, so it's like, you know what I'm saying, you paying all this money, and they and they add the interest rate on it, which adds another ten, fifteen thousand, maybe. Shit, damn, you damn near paying double for a car that you can't really afford. That it's not time to get yet, but you want it and your desire for that car and for you to look a certain type of way or whatever. You, you, you like fuck. I gotta get it. I gotta get it. So you get it. You know, it's it's kind of like selling your soul. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to live comfortable. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying car notes are a bad thing, but for whatever position you in, if you already in a particular position, like not where you want to be at and you go get this car, then that's like selling your soul to me. So that's one of the things I feel like that the devil is talking about in this book. I just wanted to, you know what I'm saying? Put that example out there. But so one another key thing I took from the book is, you know what I'm saying? The the devil said that the non drifter takes from life whatever he wants, and the drifter takes whatever he can get. Which sounds like to me is you know what I'm saying? Like a bum, you know. <laughs> like a bum, you know, a bum just take what he can get, you know what I'm saying? Settle for anything. And a non-drifter always keep his expectations high and got big standards. And you want to, you know what I'm saying, do it like this or do it like that. And a, a, a drifter don't give a fuck as long as he doing it, you know what I'm saying. He want to look like the money, but ain't got the money, you know what I'm saying. That's how I look at that when he said that. But what's another thing, man? Right, one thing about the non-drifters. I mean, one thing about drifters, people who are under the control of the devil and these negative thoughts. Remember, the devil in this book is negative energy, which I already thought anyways, but this is what he's talking about in this book. The the devil is negative energy, and the devil wants, you know, the devil, oh, this is what I was about to say. Drifters can become... Non-drifters, no, drifters can become non-drifters if they have enough willpower. So, if you got enough willpower, you got, like, if you strong-minded and stuff like that, then you can eventually take control, back control of your mind and get you back thinking positive to the point where if you want to start this business up um, or whatever it is, whatever you want to do, you're not thinking it's going to fail before you it's even fucking started. And that's what keep you from doing it in the first place. And that's what the devil wants you to do. You know what I'm saying? Not invest into certain things and not um, better your life in certain ways. He wants you to think it's going to fail before it even start. You know? But if you got enough willpower and if your mind's strong enough, you can break out of that shit eventually, you know? And you ain't going to be stuck in the hocus pocus thing that the devil got you in, you know what I'm saying, for the longest. You won't be surrounded by this type of energy all the time. Um, Non-drifters are stuck in rhythm and habits, which is one of the devil laws in the book. So, habits and, and, and rhythm is what keep the um, drifters in motion and keep them doing what they're doing because they was raised with these habits and picked them up. Because, put it like this. This is what I take from it. When you see a kid, right? Your typical kid. Kids are filled with, like, my son or, you know what I'm saying, my stepson, anybody like that. Like, these little niggas, these little dudes, it's all, it's full of joy. They're happy. And 
sometimes they say anything. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes they be like, I want to, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a police officer. I want to be this. Or I want to be that. If you, you know what I'm saying? If you run into a typical kid, they got these high hopes because they haven't been possessed with these negative thoughts yet that older people put on them. Older people around them put on them like, if y'all watch my boxing videos, I be talking about like Javante Davis and shit, and I be talking about old, I be saying this old nigga shit, but I be telling y'all that I'm not talking about people of age. I be talking about the mindset. Old nigga is a mindset. This is what I be saying. And they stuck in a mindset and they pass it on to other people. They pass on that mindset to other people, which is energy that they pass on. And they be like, they see you fucking up or acting up in some kind of way as a young person. And they think it's over for you because they not shit in life, you know. So they think it's over for you and they think you ain't going to never make it, make it just because you fucking up at this moment with whatever you doing. But it's never over. Like I just said before, this one of the key things I just took from it. Drifters can become non-drifters if they have enough wheel pop. So you can you can break out that shit. It, it's never over for you, you know. But like I said, like the older people around you, like put their furs on you, man. They put their furs on you. And I passed up a lot of old niggas like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because they so stuck into this you know what I'm saying, pattern of thinking that they so negative, man, they just so negative, and they think that shit just don't work, and so when they see you got it, they be like, damn, you know what I'm saying, and then that's where the hate and the envy come from, but as a person that's doing it, man, you gotta like stay positive and keep thinking positive, I'm gonna keep saying that with all these little videos or whatever, and um, it's something else I want to talk about before I end this, um, Damn, let me think for a second. It's something else. I just slipped my mind talking about that. Let me see. And then, it's crazy to me. This one thing I want to talk about personally before I end this video. Like, I always... Like, have you ever tripped off people around you? Like, in competition with you? You know, they in competition with you. Have you ever tripped off, like, how people around you want to compete with you they don't want to compete with the world you know what i'm saying they don't want to compete with the outside world they don't want to they don't want to be like the best they can be they just want to compete with you you know what i'm saying <laughs> people niggas never want to compete niggas only want to compete with people they know i noticed that shit throughout all this shit like you know what I'm saying? Throughout life and shit. Niggas only want to compete with niggas they know. They don't never want to compete with the outside world. Cause they don't think they can do it. They only want to compete with you because it's you. You know what I'm saying? And they feel like it's easy to, you know what I'm saying, compete with somebody they know. They, they think they have no chance against somebody in the outside world. And they don't give a fuck about competing with them. They only want to compete with you because it's you. You know what I'm saying? That's a fucked up mentality that I see niggas got. And I've seen that shit for a long time. But I'm going to end that on that note. And I'm out, man. Um, I'm going to be back with part three. I don't know if I'm going to listen to the, the, last ver the last hour and 40 minutes of tonight. But regardless, y'all going to get it tonight or tomorrow. But that's that. I'm out, y'all. Peace.